Hello everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series and today we will be understanding life cycle of Toxoplasma bondi parasite. As you can see, we have already created the entire illustration of uh, the life cycle and if you are new to the channel, let me tell you that uh, we create illustrations from scratch and uh, we'll also try to understand the functions of individual components while we create the illustrations. So we try to make the video interesting, the topic interesting so that you can also understand each and every aspect of the life cycle. And we have so many videos that are already been created and thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for liking those videos because a lot of effort goes in creating these videos. All right. So as you can see, everything is there. We'll discuss the human cycle. We'll also discuss the, uh, the cat cycle which is phalanx cycle uh, which will include cytogony, gametogony and humans as you can see and and so on so we'll discuss everything we'll create this entire thing i'll try to create uh, you know uh, as accurate as you can see because uh, it's very difficult when you when you explain things and also try to create things so please support our channel support the content that we create by just watching the entire video and if you like the video then please hit the like button please also do subscribe to the channel all right with that note let's get started Okay, everyone, so we are on the slide where we are going to create the entire illustration. As you can see, some part of the life cycle has already been created because it takes some extra time to create these things, right? And that will definitely will interfere with the, with the explanation process. Okay, so uh, let me tell you one thing. When the life cycle starts, as it's, as, as it's the life cycle, so it's going, going to, you know, follow from one host to another one. So there is no break. And that, this is how a particular parasite survives. So we'll start with the infection of uh, humans from the sporulated oocyst. I'll come back to the sporulated oocyst. I'll not explain that right over here, uh, but I do want to show you what is a sporulated oocyst. So let me show you by increasing the size. As you can see, this is sporulated oocyst where you have uh, uh, sporozoids inside that particular uh, structure and outside you can see a, a, a wall which is making this sporulated oocyst highly resistant uh, to the environment uh, uh, effect of the environments because of that it can survive in the environment it can survive in various environmental conditions and then from there it can uh, go or it can uh, basically enter in the intermediate host which is in this case uh, is man or can be other uh, rodents including pig and there are other uh, you know it can it can have goat sheep cattle and so on this sporulated cyst can go in into those organisms uh, right so let me show you by by just showing the illustration as you can see this is uh, the the human which is going to get infected uh, by the sporulated cyst uh, by the oocyst which is uh, sporulated and it's coming from and, and uh, cyst is a different right and we'll also talk about that one and it's coming from uh, basically uh, another another host in that case definitive host which is uh, which is cat in this case we call definitive host because uh, sexual uh, cycle is happening inside the definitive host and your sexual reproduction is happening or it's just a survival in this case uh, you have uh, a sexual reproduction also is happening in the in the cat anyway so as you can see sporulated cyst can can be transferred from one organism to another one in this case we have men rodents other mammals they are they can get infected with the sporulated cyst so that is step one where oocyst which is sporulated sporulated oocyst containing sporozoids can enter inside the humans and there are different ways how a particular person can get infected one by eating contaminated uh, contaminated food which is contaminated with the oocyst and Another one I'll also talk about, tissue cyst can also directly infect humans. Uh, how? Because tissue cysts, they are present inside the, uh, the, uh, the host. And if host is eating that particular uh, organism, and that cyst can be transferred directly to humans. And there are other uh, mode of transmission also. Another one is by blood uh, transfusion or organ transplantation, where the infective form is basically the tachyzoids. Right. In that case, we have oocyst. Uh, the second case, which I talked about, is tissue cyst. Third one is the tachyzoids. Okay, so I do need to show you another illustration, which is this. So as you can see here, you can have uh, other rodents, other mammals. Uh, rodents can, can also get uh, infected in the same way. Animals, uh, including other mammals, men, can also get uh, infected by the oocyst. 
Okay, the next stage is once this particular oocyst enters inside the, the host, the step which is excitation, where the sporozoites, they are going to come out from this oocyst, right? So let me show this by, by an arrow, where sporozoites or bred, bredizoites, they are released. Now, you will ask me this, that how the bredizoites are coming into this picture. Uh, the simple answer to that one is, as I told you, infection can come from tissue cyst also. Inside that, you have inactivated parasite, which is uh, bredizoids. They can come directly out from that particular tissue cyst, and you can have sporozoids coming from sporulated oocyst, or you can have bredizoids coming from the tissue cyst. So this is uh, uh, one important aspect. Next is, you will have, after that, they will get converted into tachyzoids, right? Uh, so tachyzoids, they are the active form of the parasite and I need to use the space. So this is how it, it is happening. If it is clear, sporulated cyst, mm, releasing the sporozoids and they are getting converted into tachyzoids. And in this one, what will happen that invasion of the epithelium is the important uh, point in this case. So I'll just show you like this, that uh, they need to invade the epithelium and then they get converted into uh, tachyzoids and this is the structure of the tachyzoid. This is the typical uh, structure of the tachyzoid and uh, uh, you know, it's not that different from the sporozoid. Sporozoid is, is a little bit different than the tachyzoids. Now, as I told you, tachyzoids, they are there in the blood and then again, they can infect humans. So I'll, it will go back like that to another human if there is blood transfusion or organ transplantation. So this is highly important to understand that uh, these can also cause infection okay i hope it's clear and then tachyzoids they are going to increase in number uh, this is the the process which is acquired by the tachyzoids to increase their number and what we are talking about here is the human cycle next is once you have tachyzoids in the system now they can they can really invade into the uh, mesenteric uh, lymph node so this is the illustration for that so what I'm trying to show you here is the spread to the, the lymph node and from lymph node it's very very dangerous because now it can it can basically go to various different parts of the body including brain, including eye, including uh, it can also go uh, uh, to the fetus also which is again very very dangerous right. So what will happen from here it can move to extra intestinal organs. So yeah. One thing I forgot to mention that from here, because the human is consuming the contaminated uh, contaminated food, so the parasite will go into the intestine and from there, excitation will take place and then it will invade the intestinal epithelium. From there, they will get converted into tachyzoids. After that, they can go into lymph nodes and from lymph node, they can go into extra intestinal organs. So uh, here, uh, they, can, they can travel to various organs and that includes brain, muscle, eye and in, in case of pregnant woman it can include the fetus also and it becomes very very dangerous right so as, as I've already mentioned you that uh, uh, the tachyzoids they are going to increase in number and then spread to various organs next step is now once they they do that and then they get converted into the in inactivated form also because they want to get converted into tissue cysts, right? So that is the form which is called the bredizoids. From tachyzoids, they will get converted into uh, the bredizoids and this is right over here. And from there, they can have this structure which I was mentioning earlier is called the tissue cyst, right? And then, yeah, infection can, and this is happening inside uh, uh, another host. And that is why we call it uh, a different uh, cycle right i'll mention the names of both of these but let me let me just create my illustration and it looks really nice and decent cat right okay so that is what i've created to just show you that now another cycle is running and then cats can get infected right over here humans can also get infection through the tissue cyst so i have to use that arrow by by having tissue cyst in their food chain and you have bradyzoids and this is the tissue cyst so i'll just use that right over here okay so you can you can see now our structure is getting uh, getting shape and everything uh, this we have discussed up to here is the part of the human cycle so that is the label i have so this is the human cycle right over here right uh, where everything is happening inside the human and intermediate host 
are the humans in this case and all those things that are uh, that are happening inside the humans uh, is basically the part of the human cycle next now what will happen is cats they are going to get infection okay now once the cat is uh, getting the infection so that is what i'm mentioning over here which is uh, infection of the cat now what will happen in there as i mentioned that uh, sexual reproduction will happen and this is the part uh, where we mentioned feline cycle where all the organisms similar to cats or they, they come under the same group that is why it's known as feline cycle where cats uh, because we are giving the example of cats because they live very very close to humans right so that is why it is really important now what will happen bradyzoids now coming from the tissue cells bradyzoids they are released in in the intestine so that is the step one now bradyzoids they are getting released in the intestine what will happen uh, hap happen after that you will have a lot of bradyzoids uh, getting formed by the process of cytogony right so a sexual reproduction you will have uh, multiple bradyzoids in the body of the organism and in this case cat is the example so let me label that oops so i think it uh, it acquired this yeah, I'm so sorry it's getting a little bit crowded, but I hope uh, you are able to understand that bradyzoids they are released and then using cytogony bradyzoids they are uh, getting high number and then bradyzoids will un they will undergo uh, gametogony. Now what is gametogony? We have already understood that. If you have not seen my previous videos, then please do watch the videos where uh, uh, you know plasmodium was explained. Now in gametogony we will have gametocytes, male and female gametocytes, right? because for sexual reproduction you need female and male gametocytes and from there you will have uh, male and female gametes they are two different things okay do not get confused with those so you'll have male and female uh, gamete and further with male and female gamete fertilization is the step that will cause the formation of zygote now here right over here zygote formation will happen and from the zygote it will get converted into oocyst and that is the unsporulated oocyst. You don't have any spores, right? And now you can connect all the dots very, very easily because the next step is the sporulated cyst from the unsporulated oocyst. Okay, so I hope uh, that, that it's clear now because we have connected all the dots. So what happened is we, we started from oocyst, which is sporulated, uh, and, and we saw that this can get entered into various hosts uh, let's say uh, different types of organisms as intermediate hosts including rodents mammals and then excitation can happen after that they can invade intestinal epithelium get converted into tachyzoids tachyzoids through blood transfusion or uh, organ transplantation they can get uh, they can infect humans again and then they can also transfer to lymph nodes from their intestine extra intestinal organs including br uh, brain muscle eye fetus and then they get converted into bradyzoids. I'm so sorry, uh, bradyzoids, and then they are the part of the tissue cyst. And tissue cyst is further in the cat can can get converted into gametocyte, and that is gametogony. And then fertilization of male and female gametes will happen because they will get transformed into male and female gametes. That will form the zygote, and from the zygote they will have the sporulated, unsporulated oocyst. After that, it will get converted into sporulated cyst. So as you can understand, very very clearly from this diagram that toxoplasma gondii will have two different uh, discrete part of their life cycle one will be human cycle second one will be feline cycle and in both case lot of different steps are going to happen lot of different uh, transformation of the parasite will happen so parasites they are very very clever they understand human biology they know how to survive inside humans they know how to survive in other organisms they have developed the mechanism how to invade the uh, how to invade the host and also evade the immune system cleverly and that is why it's really really fascinating it's really really interesting to understand the life cycle of all the parasites uh, whether they are animal parasites whether they are human parasites right so i hope uh, now you are able to uh, you know better understand the life cycle of toxoplasma gondii and now if you can read the life cycle you will you will definitely be more comfortable in understanding all the steps that are involved in the life cycle of toxoplasma gondii I hope the video was helpful and if you have uh, you know understood a little bit from this video and if you think the effort was worth then please do hit the like button please support our channel 
your support is very very important if you are listening this that that means you have you have uh, you know uh, you have seen entire video and i thank you for that one and please stay tuned i'll bring more uh, videos if you want to understand a specific topic any topic related to biosciences and then please do let me know i'll try to make video on that one all right thank you so much i'll meet you in the next one